In this video, I will demonstrate how to quickly set up a pair of TRIO Q-Series licensed radios to perform a test or a demonstration using the built-in wizard tool. You can see on the left side of this image, the entry point radio is configured for a transmit power of 20 dBm, or 100 milliwatts. It is connected to a computer to configure the radio and to do diagnostics. The entry point radio is connected through a short feeder tail or jumper cable to a TRIO 4-port RF attenuator. The attenuator provides 80 decibels of attenuation between any two ports. We have another RF feeder tail cable connecting to the remote radio. Because the entry point radio is configured for 20 dBm transmit power and we have 80 dB of attenuation, we can expect the RSSI or the received signal strength indication at the remote radio to be approximately minus 60 dBm. The box at the bottom of this screen shows the hardware required for this demonstration. First, I will navigate to my computer's Local Area Network Connection Properties page. We must ensure the computer's IP address is within the same subnet range as the radios. We must change the settings for TCP IP version 4. You can see this computer is set up for an IP address of 192.168.2.101. This is acceptable in this case. Here we can see the web page for a TRIO QR450 radio to which I am currently connected via Ethernet cable. Note the default IP address is used, which is 192.168.2.15. For a quick demonstration or test, the wizard mode is very useful. To get to the wizard mode, we go to the setup menu, and then rather than manually go through all of the uh, individual setup pages, we simply click the wizards button. There are many wizard options. Two major groups of wizards are available. First, those for a two-frequency or duplex system, and many different options in this group, using both the QR450 radio and the QB450 full duplex radio. The second group is the single frequency group, otherwise known as simplex. This uh, is very common today when frequencies are often in short supply. In this case, I will pick a simplex wizard and then choose the most common network type, which is point to multipoint. Today, we want to configure first the entry point radio, so I will click on that option. That takes us to a page where we can see a few simple questions are asked. First, what do we want the IP address of the radio to be? And I'll just go to 2.1 for an IP address. We can leave the subnet mask alone. The transmit frequency is 480 megahertz. The transmit power I'm going to set to 20 dBm to match the uh, example that I showed you a few minutes ago. The receive frequency, because this is a simplex system, should match the transmit frequency. So I will change it to be 480 megahertz in this example. The security setting is for login or administration security, and for this simple test, we will disable that. Once we have selected the security option, we can scroll to the bottom of the page and see the pre-configured options that the wizard has set up for us. Next, what we need to do is scroll to the top of the page and click the Activate Configuration button. This pushes all of the changes into the radio the radio LEDs now begin to flash all green. Now we could wait for this radio to finish activating, but rather than do that, I will disconnect physically from this radio and move the Ethernet cable over to the other QR450 radio on my bench. The next thing to do is to just sit and be patient for a few seconds because the radio and the computer need to get to know each other. Using the address resolution protocol, they will each figure out the other's IP address and MAC address. There will be a little bit of activity on the radio LEDs. Once this is finished, you can just type in the IP address again and hit enter, and it will take us to the IP, the web page of this second radio.
Now initially these radios did have the same IP address, so uh, that is uh, part of the reason we needed to pause and let the computer's operating system work with uh, the address resolution protocol to uh, clear up that confusion within the radio system. We will now navigate to the second radio's setup menu and then to the wizards page as we had done in the first. We'll scroll down towards the bottom of the page to the simplex group. Instead of this time picking the entry point radio, I will pick the remote radio. And again, we're asked the same questions. Here I will change the IP address of the radio to 2.2. .2. Again, I'll set the transmit power to 20 dBm and the receive frequency to 480 megahertz. And finally, I will disable security for this simple example. We scroll to the top and click the Activate Configuration button. While this radio is activating, I'm going to move my Ethernet cable back to the entry point radio, which should have finished activating by now. So I can now go and type in its new IP address, 2.1, and hit Enter. And yes, there comes the web page. Remember, after connecting to a radio, it is wise to wait a few seconds for the computer and radio to get to know each other using the address resolution protocol. Now we could have a quick look at the setup menu and the network and radio pages which were pre-configured by the wizard. Primarily on the network page we did set the IP address. On the radio page we set the radio mode, bandwidth, transmit and receive frequency, the transmit power, Further down in the simplex parameters area, we set the system topology to be point to multipoint. In this radio, we set the function of this radio to be the entry point. You will recall that in the other radio, we set its function to be remote. Now, this radio system is fully configured at this point, but it's really a good idea to test this system before uh, just immediately adding the complexity of attempting to perform SCADA communications. Um, so there are various features in a TRIO radio system to allow you to do testing. Why don't we move to the Diagnostics menu. There's a tool here called Packet Transmission Test. In this test, we can type in the IP address of a destination radio. 2.2 .2 is the radio at the far end of the link, the remote radio that we configured. And now we simply hit the start button and the entry point radio generates test messages and sends them to the remote radio. The remote radio detects these are test messages and sends them back. Once we have finished, you will see here that 10 messages were sent and 10 received. This is a working system. If you are installing a working system, you probably would want to um, increase the number of packets sent to perhaps 500 or 1,000. The last thing you might do here in an actual test would be to click the commissioning record button and this prints a report that you can then um, uh, save for your own purposes. You'll notice here the RSSI, Receive Signal Strength Indication, is minus 62.1 dBm, very close to the value I had um, uh, predicted. Now we could uh, print this to a PDF file for future use if desired. Also, now that some traffic has been sent in the system, you can go to the monitoring menu and then to the summary page there are many good diagnostic items here, but the most useful are at the bottom, typically. These include the VSWR, or reflected power on the system, the received signal strength indication, and other items such as discarded packets and uh, uh, diagnostic statistic information. If you are making changes and you want to see the RSSI value uh, as it changes, 
uh, you must manually update or refresh the screen by hitting the F5 key or by repeatedly hitting the summary button. Thank you for watching this video which discussed configuration of the TRIO Q-Series radio using the Setup Wizard.